Hello, my name is Ari Lam, and the following shear is Le'iloi Nishmas, my dear aunt Sarah Lam Dratch, Sarah Rivka Bas Harav, Nachamu Mindel. Um, as I noted in the last shear that I gave as part of this ongoing uh, wonderful Tehillim project, one of the things that I love about this project is the intimate sense of entering into a person's home and getting to know a bit about uh, their life as they teach you a bit of Tehillim. And uh, one thing that has been mentioned to me by several people uh, is that they constantly are listening to this uh, lecture series, to this uh, Shira series, this Tehillim project, while they are uh, cooking. So I thought it only appropriate to record the following Shira in my kitchen uh, as I'm cooking dinner for, uh, for my family. Um, today's psalm is Psalm 78, uh, Psalm Ches, uh, which is... A rather unique psalm in that uh, it recounts in great detail, and of course within the context of a narrative structure, but in great detail, uh, the history of B'nai Israel up until that point. And other than that retelling, it makes no other claims, it doesn't have any significant embellishments that take the reader or the learner beyond the realm of history. It really attempts to uh, instruct and to teach through the retelling of history, and it is significant in that it reworks much of the earlier material from the Chumash uh, and from uh, the Nevi'im Rishonim, from the first uh, early prophets, into a uh, conceptual whole, and in that regard it's quite striking. Now one of the events that is recounted in this psalm is significant in that it doesn't occur, uh, or it isn't mentioned, in the earliest source um, within the context, of, uh, the context of which it is discussed, and that is uh, the destruction of the Mishkan at Shiloh, uh, the destruction of the tabernacle at Shiloh. Mishkan Shiloh's destruction um, is alluded to in this uh, parak of Tehillim, in, in Tehillim Mizmor Ayin Chet, and, it's a, and it is uh, mentioned several times uh, in the prophet Jeremiah's harangues uh, in Yirmiyahu's uh, exhortations to the people of, of B'nai Yisrael to repent lest the Beis HaMikdash itself be destroyed. But interestingly, it isn't mentioned at all. Uh, it isn't even alluded to in its original source, uh, in the source that deals with the time period in which this tragedy occurred, and that is Sefer Shmuel, Shmuel Aleph. Shmuel Aleph, uh, Perig Gimel and Perig Dalid, which recount uh, the battle uh, of Evan Ezer, and its aftermath, which is the uh, the Philistine capture of the Ark of the Covenant of the Arona Baris, um, mention the disaster that befell B'nai Israel in that battle with the Philistines, but does not recount what seems to have been the most significant outcome of that battle, which is the destruction of the Mishkan at Shiloh, which was the central gathering point for the B'nai Israel up until that time. So what I'd like to do um, over the course of this very brief lecture uh, is just give... Uh, you, the listener, uh, entree into the uh, biblical memory, if you will, of this event, uh, beginning with uh, Mizmor Ayin Ches, continuing on to Yirmiyahu, and then finally uh, circling back around to discuss the question of why in the world would Shmuel uh, not mention such a significant, tragic, and, and surely um, monumental, in the most horrendous sense, event in the course of Jewish history. Um, beginning with Mizmor um, Ayin uh, Ches, um, the Pasuk tells us as follows, in the beginning in, in Pasuk Samech, Vayitosh Mishkan Shiloh, O'el Shikain Ba'adam, Vayitain La Shavi Uzo, V'sevarto V'yad Tsar. And God forsook uh, the tabernacle of Shiloh, um, the tent which he had made uh, to dwell among men, and he delivered his, his strength or his power into captivity, uh, and his glory or his, or his awesomeness into the hands of the enemy. So this is a clear reference um, near the end of the Mizmar to the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh. It is worth noting that although the tragedy is acknowledged and the full weight um, of this event in Jewish history is felt by the reader, its deployment is in service to a rather more encouraging end, which is um, the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh is seen by the psalmist as one event that, while uh, while certainly traumatic 
and a result of the sins of B'nai Yisrael is one step on the way to the very happy ending, if you will, or conclusion of this period of Jewish history, which is, beginning in Pasuk Ayin, uh, And God chose David, his servant, uh, and took him from, the, uh, from being a shepherd, and he rose him up from rags to riches and made him king of Israel. So the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh, while a result of the sins and transgressions of B'nai Yisrael, is ultimately one of the necessary steps on the way to the establishment of the Davidic dynasty, and in a a larger eschatological sense, and, and here I'm I'm uh, expanding upon the Mizmar, uh, to the line that would eventually produce produce the Mashiach um, and the Bias HaGoel and the coming of the uh, of the redemption. So Mishkan Shiloh's um, memory or the memory of its destruction is here preserved um, in a positive light, or more accurately perhaps it's deployed in service of a positive end. We're trying to figure out how the Jewish people got from um, Mitzrayim and all of the sins that they committed there and all along the way in the Midbar until the period of the judges were in the Shoftim where they are constantly committing transgressions as well. Uh, how did they get from there to the period of David where um, the glory of B'nai Yisrael is restored at least for a time and the Beit HaMikdash is built and so on and so forth. So the memory of Mishkan Shiloh was deployed uh, in service of a more optimistic, positive end. Similarly, Yirmiyahu. Yirmiyahu discusses the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh in the context of attempting to encourage his Jewish compatriots to repent of their sins and to return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So what does he say? Um, in, Perek, uh, in Perek Zion, Pasuk Yud Beis, he says, Ki el mekomi asher bishilo, asher shikanti shemisham barishona, Go to the place, Shiloh, the place where the Mishkan once stood, where I, Shashikanti uh, Shemisham, where I caused my name to dwell originally, and see, see what I did to it. Just as I destroyed Mishkan Shiloh, so too will I destroy my Beis Hamikdash, my temple, if you don't repent. So here, of course, Similarly, similar, and similar to Perak to Ayin Ches, the memory of the destruction of Shiloh is palpable, and it's traumatizing. Yet, it is deployed in such a manner that it serves the positive end, the constructive end of forcing B'nai Yisrael or convincing B'nai Yisrael to return to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. After all, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you think that I would rather let you sin just so that, and let you perpetuate uh, transgressions just so that I can keep the Beis HaMikdash into which I put so much effort or into which you put so much effort, you are sadly mistaken. I won't keep around this Beis HaMikdash just to, let, just to let you defile it with your injustices. And so again, the destruction of Shiloh here is put to a very positive, constructive end. And so the question becomes, why isn't the destruction of Shiloh mentioned in Shmuel? We see it's mentioned in Tehillim, we see it's mentioned in Yirmiyahu, but why is it mentioned in Shmuel? And I believe that it's this observation, the positive end to which the memory of the destruction of Shiloh was put, that can help us answer this question. Because after all, uh, archaeologists, in fact, uh, excavations... Uh, in the early 20th century, and then again in the 1980s, 1981 to 1984, at the site of Shiloh, have confirmed that it was in fact destroyed. So why doesn't Shmuel mention it? The answer, I believe, is that at the time of the destruction of Shiloh, an even greater catastrophe occurred. Not only was the temple destroyed, but the Aron Habris, the Ark of the Covenant, was taken into Philistine hands, first to the city of Ashdod, and then to the city of Ekron, two of the cities of the Philistine Pentapolis, if you will. And there, it was paraded through the streets. The Ark of the Covenant, which housed the Luchos, was paraded through the streets like some sort of trophy. And as this Chilol Hashem was going on, we can easily imagine the Navi saying, is this a time to mourn? Is this a time to say, Oy mehayalanu? What's happened to us? We have the Ark of the Covenant sitting in the hands of our enemies. And this is something that we can do something about. We can trust in God. We can wait for it to return. We can plan for its eventual restoration to us. And that is indeed what occurs. HaKadosh Baruch Hu 
makes it impossible for the Philistines to safely hold on to the Ark of the Covenant. And then finally, the Aaron is returned to B'nai Israel with great pomp and circumstance. I believe that if we examine the process by which Tanakh remembers, and in the case of Shmuel, does not remember, seemingly, the destruction of Mishkan Shiloh, we can profitably contrast it with, let's say, the way in which we remember the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, both Batei Mikdash. When it comes to the destruction of the Batei Mikdash, we simply mourn. We do nothing but cry and perhaps cry for other things as well, the Crusades, the Inquisition, whatever the case may be, the Asara Harugei Malchus. But when it comes to the destruction of Mishkan Shilo, there seems to be another attitude at play here. Its memory is not preserved simply for the sake of crying, which of course is a valid model. Instead, its memory is preserved for the purpose of producing value, of, produce, of producing positive results, of encouraging tshuva, and so on and so forth. The memory of Shiloh, then, is, in a roundabout way, a happy memory. Because, of course, while we remember the trauma, the, the urgency, the anxiety that accompanied the destruction of the tabernacle, we, at the same time, use its memory for positive ends, for optimistic ends, for or with a sense that things can and will and must and should get better. And I believe that it's this message that is so appropriate to uh, a celebration of the life of my Aunt Sarah, because of course, um, she was just such a, a happy, optimistic, larger than life, just in so many ways, person, that putting together, that using her memory, or putting together a project like this in honor of her memory is perhaps the greatest tribute that could be paid, because the learning that goes on over the course of this project is just so powerful and so meaningful and is so widespread, how many people listen to this on a daily basis, um, that I believe we've really turned... Um, this tale and project into a celebration of the life of, uh, of Aunt Sarah um, in much the way, I think, that Tanakh, that Shmuel, that Tehillim, and that Yirmiyahu turned the destruction of Shiloh into a celebration of the potential that is latent within each and every member of Am Yisrael.